once data has been collected, and even as we're deciding to collect data, it's important to understand why we're collecting the data and then what we do with it. So we call this experimental design. And then as a sort of side question that's quite important, we talk about experimental ethics. So let's discuss design first. The goal with most research is to discover a way to change the world around us in some positive way. So we talk about having these explanatory variables, data that we collect that explain things. These are sometimes called input variables because it's the start end of the calculation or the start end of the experimental process. And they're also sometimes called independent variables because these can be the part of things that we can't control. A very popular independent variable is time. I'm not allowed to go back and forth, but we know that time changes things all the same. Once we understand what these independent or explanatory variables are, we try to use these to inform our understanding of the response variable, sometimes called the output or sometimes called the uh, dependent variable. And these are the parts that we usually truly want to change, we just can't get at them. So, you know, if I want to increase my height, and that's something that I can't normally control directly, I would try to eat all my vegetables as a child and maybe not drink coffee like Grandma told me. Stunt my growth, which I think is a myth. But these explanatory variables on the input side and these response variables on the output side are how we create models that might describe what we're trying to study. But here's where you have to watch out. A rather famous bit of research that led to a rather expensive project in a nameless county off the coast of a state that might be called Golden was about student success. And after paying approximately six figures for a research firm to look into successful middle school and high school campuses in the school district, they found out that depending on how many trees and shrubs were at the schools, determined whether there was more or less student success. So the suggested explanatory variable was number of trees, and the suggested output variable, or that dependent variable, was student success levels. This was shown to be very well connected in some of the initial research. A several million dollar bond was floated to the voters of the county who agreed, and they planted a bunch of trees at a lot of schools and ran the study again and found that now, with every school having lots of trees and shrubs, there was no more control based on trees of student success. What was happening was, despite the fact that number of trees were up and down on high performing or low performing campuses, there was what we call a lurking variable. Lurking variables are things that the original study design didn't plan or didn't think about, but they truly control those output response variables. Turns out that in high schools and middle school campuses, if you don't have a bond that pays for the trees, trees and shrubs are a feature of parents had more money to give to school to donate. Parents at schools whose kids are having to dodge bullets at night and are worried about their next set of food don't usually give extra money to things like trees. They're focused on additional tutoring services or making the next bill payment. So the rich schools, the well-funded schools, the schools that hired the best teachers also initially had a bunch of trees. So that lurking variable, we would probably call it uh, economics, the economic income of student parents. So when you look at a study and are seeing that it's saying, here's the inputs, here's the outputs, always ask yourself, is there some lurking variable that might be changing results? And economics doesn't have to be a lurking variable if we're able to control for that, but in this case it is something that affected that situation. Lurking variables are part of good study design, thinking about them. And this gets into the ethical side of study design. It's okay maybe to plant a bunch of trees on a campus, but we might talk about the ethics of making voters pay for millions of dollars that didn't actually improve student success and at the end of the day didn't do much for the beauty of the campuses because they just kind of planted trees. They didn't think about aesthetics that wasn't paid for in the bond. So you want to think about if you're going to do a study or if someone has done a study, how well has this been thought out? 
other examples of where ethics comes into play in the study data collection and design would be what if I have a new classroom technique? If I only do that on some of my students and I tell the other students you have to endure business as normal, that's not really fair to the new students. And I'll tell you from personal experience, I can get away with that with you, a college student, and no one's going to complain at me too much. But if I tell a bunch of parents that your middle school is going to be the control group and we're not going to give your kids the new technology and laptops because we want to see if it really works, there's some people who will feel cheated. Another case where I think the ethics comes into play is when you pay people to be part of a research experiment. One of the key components of ethical statistical research and one of the hallmarks of research that you can trust is that the people who run it aren't cutting any corners. And you can tell right from the start if they're cutting corners. One question I tend to ask my students in my face-to-face -face class is, if I offered you $5 to do a survey for me, would I be unduly influencing you and essentially forcing you to take that survey? Most of my students will tell me, after some discussion, no, $5 isn't all that much. But if I go to some parts of the world where a dollar a day is the max salary that someone can expect, $5 suddenly becomes a whole week's worth of work. It would be like if I offered you $700. Bump that up to some studies where I see people offering as much as $20 or $30 for some research participation or medical studies where in the United States we'll spend a couple hundred dollars to bribe participants with gas cards and whatnot and suddenly you're talking about paying someone a whole year's worth of salary and that becomes pretty challenging to do in terms of believing yeah for a whole year's salary there's not a lot I wouldn't do even if it's some dodgy research that might not be really ready for human trial yet to control for this in our studies, we talk about a couple of things. We talk about institutional review boards, uh, sometimes abbreviated IRBs, and these are very important when you're doing research on any human subjects. If there's a study that involves people that doesn't say right at the beginning, IRB approval was obtained from this, that, and the other location and people, you don't really want to trust the output of that information. It hasn't been done ethically from the beginning, and people who cut corners at the start Time and time again we've seen in their studies they cut corners in the middle part as well. The other thing that we like to do, and this is one of those big higher components that you'll see probably on our syllabus that say this course teaches communications and ethics um, that we want to talk about is sometimes called the grandmother test or the newspaper test. Basically, if you're doing a study, would you be proud to tell your grandmother what you're doing to the people in that study? Would you be proud to read about yourself performing that study in the newspaper the next day? Would you feel like you could sleep safely at night once everyone knew what you were doing? Asking those questions are sometimes one of the first things that it takes to get past institutional review. You have to ask, is it worth it to force people to answer these questions, to think about these experiences, to get given these medications? Or in the case of a lot of medical trials, is it fair to ask some people to not get any medicine and some people to get the new medicine until we can compare those two groups? So that's somewhat important to think about as we're still in this early phase of data collection because we really want to make sure that we're collecting data in a usable way as we perform all these calculations. That's the real focus of our class this term.